Hey guys, Johnny Kermis 2000 here, and welcome to my Let's Play of Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro, and this is for the PlayStation, as you can see. Now, let me just go out ahead and say this right off the bat. You may be wondering why I'm referring to this part as Part 0. Well, that is because we are not going to actually start the game proper just yet. I'm going to take this time to go through the training mode of this game which is actually pretty unique and to go over the all the, the hidden costumes that are available in this game. I figure I might as well go ahead and show off the costumes and some of the gameplay mechanics since they're very similar to the first game. Uh, so if you haven't checked out my, fir the, the, my let's play of the first game then I suggest you do so because I'm going to be spoiling the hell out of it if you haven't already seen that first game. So anyway right off the bat we're gonna go into the training mode which we t actually takes place in the danger room. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna shut up and let Professor X uh, speak, which is actually pretty cool. Professor X from the X-Men as well as Rogue from the X-Men are going to be leading us in the training room, or in the training mode in the danger room. So let me shut up and let these guys Hello, talk. Spider-Man, I see you've decided to take advantage of Beast's offer to train in our state-of-the-art danger room. This exercise will test one of your greatest abilities, web swinging. To complete this mission, you need to turn all of the green areas blue by landing on them or walking over them. Be careful though, do not touch the red areas or you will fail the mission. Okay, Prof, this should be a piece of cake. I was born for this sort of thing. Alright, so now we have been introduced to the first big gameplay mechanic of this game, which is the swinging. Of course, we're playing as Spider-Man. It's essentially the same thing as the first game, even though the first game I did play on the Dreamcast version, so it's a little bit different the controls, but essentially they're the, they're the same thing. Uh, one interesting thing about this is that this training mode mission is actually pretty damn hard, and the reason why it's hard, as we will soon see in a minute here, there's a section where you have to let go... Now, the thing with this is that you only swing twice, so if you jump and press and hold the swing button, you only swing twice. After that, you're going to fall, and you're going to not be a happy camper, but for this part right here you actually have to continuously keep swinging as you guys see right there from the instructions so after the second swing you automatically fall and if you fall into the red thing you obviously fail the mission I actually had to retry this mission over and over again and it was getting so much on my nerves because as you guys see there it's it gets pretty damn close so it's kinda of weird that they get one of the harder missions off uh, first but we got through it through the power of editing, of course. This mission utilizes another of your web abilities, the web yank. You can pull both enemies and some objects by pressing down at the same time you press the web button. You can yank to the side by pressing diagonally down to the left or right, and the web button to yank in those directions. Follow my instructions and make your attempt. That sounds easy enough. Are you gonna do that talking in my head thing? Mmm, so creepy. I intend to do just that, Spider-Man. <laughs> okay, then. Alright, so now we are learning how to do the web yank, which was another move that was from the original Spider-Man game, so there's really nothing new. There is one new technique that you can do with the web yank, though, which I will be showing off. It's the last thing that we see here, or I think the second to last thing here. Uh, one thing that I did want to talk about is the voices of Professor X and Rogue. The voice of Professor X is Darren Norris, who you may actually know as the voice of Cosmo from the Fairly Odd Parents, and the voice of Rogue is Jennifer Hale, who you may know as the voice of Cortana or from her many different roles because she is one of the most prolific uh, voice actresses in video games. So that's pretty cool. I actually didn't know that before I... I, I think I remember Jennifer Hale. I didn't know about Darren Norris, so that was actually a pretty good surprise when I was actually kind of writing my notes down for this for this part. So anyway, here we go with mission three. This mission tests your L1 aiming abilities. You must make it to the top of the tower without touching the black area. Use your L1 targeting button to aim and then R2 to swing to the target. Ah, this will come in handy for rescuing cats out of trees. And this is where we get introduced to the L1 aiming we did something similar. The, this was present in the first game, although we didn't really do it much. I can only remember one part where we actually had to do this in the first game, and that was when we had to go from 
uh, pillar to pillar when we were chasing after the lizard, or not the lizard, when we were facing when we were chasing after Venom in the sewers. That was the only area that we really utilized this uh, this technique from. So I think in this game it gets utilized a little bit more, but not really. The the first game really didn't use it all that much, and yes, it it gets pretty trippy when you get turned upside down and stuff like that. But it's fairly easy. We get through it all right, so no big deal. On to mission four. And uh, by the way, yes, I am cutting these low times severely. In this mission, Spider-Man, you will practice using your L2 targeting feature. When there are multiple targets on screen, you can easily cycle through them by pressing the L2 button repeatedly. When you have your target, press up and the web button to fire impact webbing at it. Hit only the green targets. You'll fail the mission if you hit the red ones. Simple enough. Do I get a prize for this? I could use this stuff for it for my girl. Oh, Spidey, you're so funny. And uh, this one we get to use our cycling, our tiger, uh, bleh, target cycling technique, if you want to call it a technique. It's more meta than, than anything. I can't remember if this was actually present in the Dreamcast version or not. I want to say yes, but um, the Dreamcast, the controller for it, for the Dreamcast didn't have as many buttons as, as the PlayStation version, obviously. Uh, or, I guess not obviously, if you don't have a Dreamcast, you didn't have a Dreamcast. It doesn't have as many buttons, so I'm trying to remember if, if the Dreamcast version of, of Spider-Man 1 actually had cycling through it. Hmm. I'm sure somebody will tell me, but this is easy enough. Again, um, I don't really tend to use this feature all that much, as, uh, unless it's for something like a specific area that I actually need to use it from. Uh, use it for, rather. But, yeah, it, it's it's there, I guess. One thing I would like to note is that Rogue is actually using her... One of the, the, the yellow and green outfits for the X-Men. She's not u utilizing... A lot of people will remember her for u using her outfit from the animated series, which, obviously, this game does not utilize. Uh, she was using... In this game, she uses the, the yellow and green outfit. I believe that was in style, or, or rather, was the one that she was using in the comics in the t at the time that she that this game was made so there's a little bit of trivia for that uh, I tried to find if there was an actual name for it I couldn't find it it it's pretty much just referred to as the yellow and green outfit so uh, for those of you who know what the proper name of that outfit is you can leave it in the comment section otherwise I don't know what it's called anyway on to mission five Whoa, this looks interesting this is to practice your zipline ability, Spider-Man. These are the only places you may touch. If you touch anywhere else, you fail. All or nothing, huh, lady? All right, I'll give it a whirl. Oh yeah, you can't web swing either for this one. Trying to make this easy, eh? Stand back, people. I'll be back in a jiff. Remember, Spider-Man, you can only touch the green areas. Green, right, got it. Now this mission actually requires a bit of thinking the first time that you you, you know you started off. Now what they actually don't tell you here is that you're actually supposed to let go of the wall, jump a little bit ahead or fall a little bit ahead of where the current green area is on the ceiling and then uh, propel yourself upward with the zip line uh, move with with the with the webbing. It took me a while when I first played this game, but after a while, if you know what to do, it should be easy. Although it, sometimes it is a bit wonky, because sometimes, I swear to God, I'm still on the green when I'm crawling on the ceiling. And then it, it marks me as, you know, as climbing on an area that I'm not supposed to. And other times, you, I can clearly see Spider-Man's hand on an area where I'm not supposed to go, like right there. I, I could have sworn that I just saw Spider-Man's hand going in the in the area that I'm not supposed to climb on, and it doesn't mark it. So th this mission is a little bit wonky, and it can get annoying if you keep getting game overs and stuff like that. But alas, it's part of the training mode. You technically don't have to do these training modes. I just thought that it was pretty cool. I, I wanted to show it show it off. One, so kind of like a refresher as to how this game plays. Uh, this game plays. And also because I thought it was a pretty neat sort of idea that instead of just doing like a regular uh, training mode where it's just a, some anonymous person telling you what to do, it's actually, you know, we're actually in the danger room at the X-Mansion having Professor uh, Professor X and Rogue from the X-Men teaching us how to use our powers. I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, another fun fact, this was actually, I can't remember if this was actually the first time that the X-Men were in 3D. 
Um, there is another game called Mutant Academy on the PlayStation, but I can't remember if this came before or after it. This one might pose more of a challenge, Spider-Man. It helps you to work on your stealth abilities. The objective is to make it to the end without alerting the guards at all. This means no webbing them up or attacking them. Being cautious will sometimes keep you out of dire situations. This mission teaches you how to take advantage of your ability to sneak around. Yeah, I can do sneaky. All right, so now we are learning how to utilize our sneaking ability, which admittedly this game doesn't really do all that great. Um, the main problem here is that you never know how far some of these goons are able to see. Like that guy right there, I could have sworn I was in front of and he didn't see me, you know, before I was able to go into that little crevice there. And there's going to be another section up, up here um, in a little bit where there's a guy that's walking back and forth and sometimes he'll see me when I land on the area behind him, sometimes he won't. In fact, uh, again, through the power of editing, you guys don't see how many times it actually took me to do this mission. It, it took me quite a while. It, again, the main problem here is, in this game is that you never really know how far these guys are able to see. So you never really know how much... Like right here, I'm standing right here, right almost in front of him, but he can't see me for some reason. Um, and it's not until I actually swing right over him um, that he actually notices me. And right here... In previous times, the, the previous times that I actually did it, I landed right there in, in the same place that I landed this time and he didn't see me, or he saw me rather. Uh, this time he didn't, so it's kind of wonky like that. This mission is, again, is one of those missions that are probably going to take you a couple times to complete to get used to. And uh, admittedly, the first time that I played through this game and I was trying to do this mission, I failed it a lot. Even when I was recording this, I failed it a lot. So... It's just one of those things where it's it's just trial and error. This will test your combat skills, Spider-Man. You need to last for two minutes to complete this mission. No problem, Teach. I can do this in my sleep. And finally, we have the final mission of this the the training mode here. We have to survive for two minutes while beating up these thugs. Uh, these thugs will shoot at you and sometimes throw grenades at you, so you can't really just stand there and not do anything. I mean, I, I suppose you can try, but the whole point of this is to show off the fighting, so that's what I'm doing right here. Now, there are a couple things that was that were changed from the first game to this game. Uh, one of the major things was right there, as you guys saw. You are now able to jump and throw a web ball at the same time. In the first game, you weren't able to do that. And in this game, it does come in handy a lot, a, a good amount, a good amount of time. So you'll see me utilize it throughout this game. Um, and also the the combo that you do is is uh, is also different. Not that it do makes that much of a difference though. So, but it, it is there. Now, one thing that I will say about this the fighting, and I mentioned it briefly in my in my let's play of the first game, is that. You, you do have an aerial attack, like right there. You do have, you, you're able to jump up in the air and land down with a either a kick or a punch, depending on what you what you use. One of the drawbacks to that, it does it does knock down the, the enemy automatically, as you guys saw there. One of the drawbacks, however, is that you, you every now and then, if you keep doing it over and over again, um, Spider-Man will do this weird thing where he'll actually, like right there, he'll actually stall. Like, he'll land and he'll do, like, his little thing where he goes on his hands. And that can actually get you in trouble because you're not able to get up fast enough. You're not able to react. Uh, you have to wait until he's done with his little animation there. So it, it's not really advised that you keep doing it over and over again. So right here, I'm able to do it because I'm breaking it up between doing, you know, jumping kicks and stuff like that with actual combat but if I were to keep doing it like three I think it's three times in a row if you do it three times in a row then you automatically um, then spider-man will do that little motion where he just stands there but anyway we are done with the proper training mode and now I want to show off a very weird very cool looking uh, mode um, as you guys saw there all the training missions are done there's challenge session but I don't show that off but this is a mode here instant action and instant action is 
Um, one of the things with Spider-Man 2 that was introduced in Spider-Man 2, which may not seem like a big deal, but it actually kind of was, is the introduction of ground levels. In the first Spider-Man mission, they were they were outside levels where you can swing all over the place, and they were inside levels where you know it was more confined and, th- and things like that. This game introduced the idea of having what are called ground levels, which is basically where you go on rooftops, but you're also able to go on the ground, which again, may not sound like a big deal, but it is something that's new. And instant action here actually is unique to the game. You never really have... There, there's a couple of missions in this game where you're able to go in the city and explore the area. But instant, the instant action mode actually has the biggest area um, of its kind where it's just generating uh, building after building and you're able to go wherever, do whatever you like. And this, I wanted to show this off because this is a precursor to the levels that were introduced in Spider-Man the movie, the game. And eventually it's what you will eventually see in games like Spider-Man 2, uh, the movie, which is where the, the series actually went from, from here, which is, was a, you know, like a sandbox, uh, free roaming, you can do whatever you want, go wherever you want. And it's just interesting to see that this is actually the first game that introduced it. It's not the best, obviously, as you guys can see. Again, this isn't the game proper, um, but it is a part of the game, and it is the first time that you actually got to play as Spider-Man and go wherever you want. And now I want to show off the costumes. For this game, I am going to be doing um, the same thing that I did with with uh, with the first game when I did my first Let's Play where I am going to be changing up the costumes every level. Um, The only thing that I'm going to say about that though is that I am only going to be showing off the costumes that weren't in the first game. So this is the first time, this is the only time that you'll see me in the regular Spider-Man costume which is pretty much the same thing that it was in the the first game although now it has the webbing underneath the armpits for some reason. Um, But after that when I start actual part one and I start actually playing the game um, you'll see me using nothing but the new costumes that were introduced in this game. Um, This game does have a bunch of costumes to unlock, as you guys see there. I went ahead and unlocked all of them. Um, I unlocked them in my original game game file, but you can also unlock them using the cheat code, which is what I did for the purposes of this Let's Play, because my original file got uh, got deleted. Um, if you want to know what the cheat code is that I used, it's very simple. It's just go to the cheat menu and use the cheat code ANTMAY, A-U-N-T-M-A-Y, and you should unlock absolutely everything. But I just wanted to show off all the costumes that are available to you. They include every single costume that was available in the first game. Plus, I believe, about, I think, ten new costumes that are exclusive to this game. Um, which is pretty damn awesome. And you also have the ability to create your own costume. Uh, so you, you can choose the look and you get to choose the powers, which is pretty damn cool. No, no other Spider-Man game so far that I can think of allows you to do that. So that's pretty awesome, in my opinion. But I just wanted to show these off. I'm going to talk about more uh, specifically about these costumes when when I actually get to start playing the, the game proper. But in the meantime, I just wanted to show them off and get you guys ready to uh, give you guys a little preview as to what to look forward to when I actually start doing the game um, you know, with part one. So that's it, guys. Um, consider this a little preview, get you guys ready for the actual game. And uh, again, I'm going to be doing the same thing that I did in my first Let's Play. And if you haven't checked that out, I suggest you do that first before you continue on with this Let's Play of mine. But anyway, guys, that's it for me. I will see you guys in my next video. This has been Johnny Curves 2000. Peace out. As always, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to get more stuff from me. In the meantime, if you like my videos, be sure to find me on Twitter, Tumblr, Raptor, and ScrewAttack.com to see the other gaming-related content that I upload. Info is in the description. Who knows? Maybe you'll like my stuff. Maybe? Maybe?